They're there only for evaluation. We actually mask them uh, while running the algorithm. Now, the method itself is pretty simple, I have to admit, but its strength comes from a revised image formation model. And so I'll devote most of, and actually this, is the, this algorithm is the first one that uses this revised image formation model. So I'll uh, devote most of my talk to explain this uh, revised model in the hope that you'll become interested and also help us improve this method and develop uh, more methods. So we published this uh, model, we verified and published it and uh, experimentally verified it in two previous uh, CVPR papers in 2017 and 2018. But before I go into the equations, I know it's early morning, so a few uh, slides with results. So this is a raw image, a coral reef in Eilat, and this is our result. Hopefully you can see the screen okay. The illumination is fine, yeah. Okay, and this is the Satil shipwreck in Eilat. You need to believe me, it's there. And this is the, our result. This is in 20 meters depth in Eilat. Currently, uh, the model works for ambient illumination, so all the images were taken under amb uh, ambient illumination. Okay, so before I uh, explain the revised model, uh, let me uh, remind you what we used until now. So hopefully this will be familiar from the several dehazing talks you heard in, I think, this auditorium or other vision days uh, previously. So the image is composed of two signals. What happens is that the clear scene is exponentially attenuated. The attenuation depends on the attenuation coefficient of the water and the range, the distance of the object. There is also an additive component, the veiling light. This comes from scattering of light, and this component increases exponentially with the distance. Now note that in the current model, this is the same attenuation coefficient that controls both components. Also pay attention that everything is written per uh, color channel, okay? And why is that? Because the water properties depend on the wavelength. Specifically, the attenuation depends on the wavelengths. And here are examples for uh, 10 typical measurements of waters around the world. These measurements were done in the 50s, but were verified since then. Note that, so the x-axis is the wavelength, and the y-axis is uh, in logarithmic scale. This is an attenuation in logarithmic scale. So note that there are really large di uh, differences in the attenuation between different wavelengths. And that's why we see the severe color distortions in the underwater images. Okay, so now we understand that this model actually comes from this equation. It's the same one, but uh, it is written as a function of wavelengths, as happens in the physical world. Now the question is, are these uh, two equations the same? And uh, you can guess that my answer is no. <laughs> okay, and let me briefly explain why. What happens to the signal when it arrives to the sensor is that it undergoes an uh, integration over the sensor sensitivity range. So over the wavelength uh, sensitivity of the sensor, the integral looks like that. I'm concentrating here on the attenuated signal. Uh, the discussion for the veiling light is uh, symmetric. I won't show it here. Okay, so let's see what we're doing. We are taking uh, this integral. And we want, we are used to write it uh, in the way it's written in the bottom, where what we actually do is we take the exponent outside the integral. Okay, and the question is, can we do it? And the answer is no. Okay, so I know there were uh, quite a, a few equations here and it's early morning, but that's the main point. We can't just take the attenuation outside of the integration. And this introduces errors when uh, using the current model. So, but uh, as I said, you're familiar with the current model. It was used in all the dehazing works uh, previously, all the underwater works before. And why is that? If you look at the wavelength dependency in the atmosphere, this is the left top left chart. You see the lines are almost straight. 
It means that, and you can actually guess that, right? Because you, uh, haze and fog and so on are usually white. This means that there is not a lot of color dependency there. So when you, uh, look, when you work in the atmosphere, this approximation of separating the integral mostly works, but when you look at the attenuation in the ocean, then it causes more errors. Okay, and until now, uh, the underwater community used the same, uh, the same equations that were used uh, in the dehazing community. Okay, so we experimentally validated this. And what we did here, we took a color chart. We, uh, we took it diving in two places, in the Mediterranean and in the Red Sea. The reason is that these are two uh, different water bodies with different properties. And now we have, uh, it's the same color cards, and we have, we measured all the distances. So we can calculate the attenuation we experience between each two pairs of colors, between all pairs of distances. Now, if the current model was uh, accurate, we would expect to get one attenuation coefficient, right? It doesn't depend on the distance and so on. But what you see in the bottom is our plots of all the measurements we, uh, we got. So you see that the dots are scattered. It means that we didn't get the same measurement between all pairs, and this happened in uh, both locations. Okay, so what, what's uh, going on here? And this, this shows, by the way, so if we were to calibrate the attenuation using one pair of charts and then apply it on another uh, pair, then the, atten the correction would, be, uh, would contain errors. So what's going on here? We are uh, used to working with these wideband uh, channels, but the signal is actually comes from this integral. So to calculate the attenuation, we need to take this integral and calculate it for uh, our distance, for one distance and the second distance, and then calculate the attenuation we experience from there. This results in this uh, lovely expression. <laughs> But uh, as you can see here, nothing cancels out, okay? So we can't just cancel out things inside the integral. And what happens is that as a result of that, the attenuation we, we measure, it doesn't actually depend only on the real physical attenuation coefficient. It depends on many other factors that you can see here that are not related to the water, optical water properties at all. They are related to the camera sensitivity, the object reflectance, the illumination in the scene, and the object distance. Okay, so hopefully I convinced you by now that there are errors in the model, in the current model. And we proposed a revised model. So in the current model, it was, uh, it's actually a very nice symmetric expression, but the revised model, we showed that the attenuation coefficients that govern uh, both uh, components, the direct signal and the scattering, are not the same. And also that they are not constant in the scene. They have some dependencies, and they, we actually measure them uh, in experiments. They vary even with the object color, and we experienced it uh, in, uh, um, uh, in experiments. So. Uh, Okay, and I want to say something in the movie. You saw my postdoc, Daria, sitting on the boat. I don't know if you noticed, and it looked very fun. She was enjoying herself on the boat, but uh, she deserves that. <laughs> she did many, uh, many in situ experiments while diving. One of them was even with her arm in a cast. It was two days before a CVPR deadline, <laughs> and she had to finish an experiment. So I don't have time to detail all the, um, all the experiments we, we did to validate each part of the equation I showed you, but they exist, in, uh, all of them are in these uh, three papers. Okay, so we concluded that um, the revised model is this complicated model, and now the, the question is, okay, so how do we work with that? What can we do with that? So now we propose the first, um, yeah, okay. Um, as a first approximation, we wanted to see what controls uh, the attenuation coefficients the most, and we propose these following approximations that we use uh, in the current method. First, 
that we remove all the other dependencies and we stay, uh, we show that the attenuation uh, coefficient has, we can uh, parameterize it with four parameters as a, a function of distance. And uh, the second attenuation coefficient, we um, assume it to be constant. What you see here are experiments and simulations using um, uh, real data that validate uh, that. Okay, so using that, um, I'll summarize how we, recon using this model, I'll summarize how we uh, reconstruct the, um, the images. So we use the revised equation. We require uh, RGBD images, so an image with a distance map, we achieve it from SFM, stereo, and so on. This is more than the single image methods that you're used to seeing, but we have more parameters here and we needed more information. Hopefully in the future we will also present a single image method that uh, uses the revised uh, model. Uh, we estimate first the backscatter from uh, the 1% darkest pixels per uh, range, per object distance. We re and then we fit it into the model. So we have the distances and we can, uh, we can uh, estimate the attenuation coefficient from there. We do more or less the same uh, with the attenuation. Was, uh, once we have uh, only the signal left, we can estimate a local illuminant map. Uh, also, this is per distance. And we also fit our approximation to there and compensate for it. And uh, the last stage is to uh, do the photo finish of the image. This is an important stage. I remind you, we work on linear images. Okay, so a few more pictures. Okay, and here we illustrate the steps of the algorithm. We have the range map. Yeah. Okay, and we take some dark pixels, these are the ones that are marked in red. This is enough to estimate the attenuation coefficient, the attenuation coefficient of the backscatter and we reconstruct a, a backscatter map, we remove that. Then we estimate the local illuminant map and the same thing based on the known distances, we uh, approximate uh, the attenuation from there. Okay, so. Hopefully, you bared with me until now. Another result, so uh, this is the same scene but from a different uh, viewpoint. This is the raw image. This is what happens if we use the old model. Now note that uh, the areas that are closer to us are reconstructed okay, but while, uh, while we get further away, things start to mess up. This is a consequence of using the old model. At some point, the errors increase and increase. This is another variation of using the old model with a different estimation. Again, at the back, things are uh, more messed uh, up. And, uh, when using our method, you see that you see that things are um, consistent across the distance of distances of the object. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, I didn't want to show you uh, this movie. I don't know why. Okay, but we have 3D models uh, online. Uh, in the, we have a, the lab's uh, Sketchfab account, and uh, you can look there at uh, corrected 3D models, and uh, well, that's open for download. So I welcome you to see that. Now, if you uh, became interested in this topic, uh, there are two two things you can do. First, we have uh, online data sets. Uh, with linear images uh, that have range maps. One of them was constructed uh, in a project with Dana and uh, Shai. Dana is here <laughs> and Shai. Uh, so they're available online, everything is linear, all the distance maps are there, so you're welcome to play with them. And uh, the second thing is you can also uh, join our lab. <laughs> to work, uh, to further work on these topics. Now, last thing I wanted to say, what you see here in this movie is a result of a different algorithm. It wasn't published uh, yet. 
And here we don't aim to ac accurately reconstruct the color, but uh, to increase the visibility range uh, in real time, as you see, our result is on the right. We uh, now started uh, in efforts to commercialize uh, this idea. So if you find this interesting and you, you want to uh, you know, join this adventure, so please come talk to me as well. <laughs> Thank you, Tali, for an excellent presentation and for staying on time. We have uh, time for a couple of questions. Uh, we have Mike, so raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Hi, great Hi. presentation. Uh, have you thought of using uh, narrow band filters for uh, looking at using, very... Sorry, I didn't hear you. Narrow band filters to look at very specific uh, wavelength ranges? This is to reconstruct the image or to measure things? This is to get better data, uh, possibly uh, very specific wavelengths behave in a way that you understand better, uh, maybe even have certain yeah. gaps in the absorption. Okay, yeah, so actually uh, the same, what you're suggesting is uh, to do some kind of a hyperspectral or multispectral imaging, so the same uh, postdoc actually we built together an underwater multispectral camera and uh, we can gather data with that, but actually we found, we started diving with it, but actually we found that there is data, so the optical, ocean optics community has enough measurements of attenuation scattering and so on that uh, we can use in simulations. Uh, but we do have the mul underwater multispectral camera. It wasn't also easy to build, but we're planning to use it in the future. It's a bit 